Hello and welcome to this video on the GIMP 2.4. Now in this video I'm going to show you how you can prepare your images that have this like white background for ebook covers or software box e-covers and so on. Uh, or for that matter, let's say you've got a, a picture from a, say a wedding for example that has something or someone in the picture that you don't want in the picture. Uh, you can use the same technique to remove that particular item or individual from that picture. For example, uh, in this case, we've got a software box e-cover here and this just would not look the same, this image here would not look the same if it had this white background in there. It looked kind of dorky actually. So in this video I'm going to show you how you can effectively remove this white background and show you what the end result would look like. It'll look like this. Now some folks call this rendering, some folks call it uh, transparencies. I call it removing the white background. So tomato, tomato, whatever you want to call it, hopefully this will be the end result. Now, since this can be rather intricate and a little time consuming, I can explain this the same technique in detail by showing you something a little bit easier to deal with. So let me get rid of these guys here, get rid of this box here, and we've got this icon for Adobe PDF and we have this icon for Adobe PDF transparency. I'm going to use this as the example because, well, frankly, there's square lines. Uh, whereas with the people, you've got the head, you got the hair, you got the fingers, you got the dollar bills and so on. And again the same technique can be used just with this one, it won't take so long. Whereas with the other one you want to take your take your time. So let's get right into this. Now first off we've got our image here. And yeah to illustrate this even better, let me do this. Let me open up something that might resemble a header. So you figure about seven hundred pixels wide, one fifty in height and go to advanced options. We want, uh, yeah, let's say white background. I'm going to change that here in a second to blue. Okay, now then over here we've got our uh, layers dialog box and that's this guy right here. So now what we want to do is we want to put this guy here I'm going to put this guy here, right in here. Now then, do this, do this, right click on my control, I'm sorry, uh, hold my control button down and then click on the C to copy this into my clipboard and then I'm going to, oh yeah, I want to create a new layer here by clicking on this and let's make this 150 by 150 which is about the same size as the um, Adobe icon and it's already in my clipboard so I should just be able to paste it. There we are. Now again this is what we do not want. We do not want this white background. We want this to blend in naturally with the blue background. So let's get rid of this. Actually let's not get rid of it. It's floating around up here so let's go ahead and anchor this to the new layer we already created by right clicking anchor layer and let's close the eyeball here so it'll go bye bye and Let's go ahead and get this guy down here and get our workspace up here. Now, right now we are at 100%, so to make this easier for us to see the details and the uh, lines here and the outline, because what we're going to do is we're going to cut this white background out. We're going to toss it in the trash so that it isn't there. it's not there anymore. So let's bring this a little bit larger to life so that way we can see all uh, most of the pixels. And we can go to 800 to see even more. But, and this is what you would want to do when you're dealing with the details such as somebody's strands of hair or their fingers or the, you know, like with that uh, image of the two people holding the dollar bills. You'd want to go to the 800 pixels. Uh, the larger you can get, the better. The more detailed you're going to be able to get. But for the sake of this video, we're going to go with four. And now then we want the paths tool. Click on that. You want to be in design mode. And let's go ahead and start at the top here just for the sake of argument. And the more details that you got to deal with, again, these are straight lines, the more details you have to deal with, use less space between your clicking. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just clicking my left mouse button to connect the dots. Okay. Now, that since I am dealing mostly with straight lines here, oh, and if you screw up something like this here, or whoops like that, control button on your keyboard, letter Z. 
You can just keep hitting the letter Z until you get back to a good spot. Let's get this down here and just continue on down the line. And you can probably see now why I chose this particular item for this video because again it's mostly straight lines and you don't want to spend all day watching me do this I would think. So go on over here a little curvature there come on up here and you'll see that this here is going to show up here in a second as a mistake and you just want to go back and correct that because you can't just go over here and hold your mouse and squeeze it in. You just hit your control Z button and go back until it's at a good spot and then do it over again. Hopefully that's making sense to you. Now uh, you get over here, over here, over here. Now you want to connect this. You want to complete your outline here. And to do that, hold your control button down. And you'll see where you've got the two circles. Well, right there you got the circle with the line through it. Now when you've got the two circles interconnecting, it looks like an infinity symbol, then click your left mouse button and you are connected. Now then, since we are now connected, what we want to do next is we want to go on over here to our layers and then right click and we want to come all the way down here to add alpha channel. And once we've added the alpha channel to this, we come over here in our dialog box and click on selection from path and that will get our little ANSA margin. And what that's done is that's selected, because it's a selection tool, our paths tool, it's basically a selection tool. Make this a little bigger so we can see it. It's selected our image that we're going to maintain. Now what we want to do is we want to invert this so we can get the marching ants going around the outside of what we want to get rid of. And to do that, we want to invert this. And we can do that a couple of ways. Go to Select, Invert, or we can also hit the Control button on our keyboard and the letter I is in... Uh, invert yeah so now that we've got that inverted we click on the delete key and there you have it folks all these little checkers here that tells you that this is basically no background I mean it's a, it's what they call a transparency and you can kind of see where we could have made a little bit better uh, lines here because this will show up here in a second when we put this up against that blue that dark blue background and again, if it weren't for the video, you'd want to spend a little more time with this, be a little more perfection oriented so that it's, the end result will look better. And again, if this were brought up to an 800 pixel size, then you'd be able to see those details. Those pixelated boxes would be a lot bigger and you could be a little more, well, like I said, detail and the end result would reflect that. So let's go ahead and get this back down to 100%. Get our little windows shorten up here tad now at this point you want to save this you can do that just by going to file save as give it a name right here and I'm going to say uh, transparency well you get the idea and then come on down here and click on save now if you wanted to save it as, as something other than a GIF or a GIF then you come on down here to select file type by extension and there's a boatload of options down here. For the time being, hit this minus button, bring this character back up here, hit the save, and then this comes up as a GIF option. Click save, that's cool. Now, what we want to do now is we want to unselect these. Up here to select, click on none, and let us go ahead and move this guy into here. And what I can do here now go up here to the move tool and with this being highlighted or actually you can see here in the layers box that this is the character that's that I'm working with right now and in the image box here versus this okay so right now I'm working on this one I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard control button on the keyboard and then click on the letter C as in copy and it's in my uh, clipboard now now let's bring this guy up here get us another new layer similar to the other one that we had here and 150 by 150 cool there's our new layer here just kinda click on that so it's highlighted and then click over here right click V as in Victor and this guy is floating so let's anchor him right click left click on anchor 
and now and this is our now this is what it used to, let's get this guy off here this is what it used to look like with a white background yuck and this is what it looks like now of course it's still kind of yucky with the imperfections there but you get the idea and you can just click this down move it around um, and with the uh, scale tool you can make it smaller a lot you can do with this tool so that's how you can remove the white background or any type of background from your image insofar as the ebook or DVD e-covers are, are created. This is how you could use your images to make them pop a little bit more, make your images look a little bit nicer on those covers. So I hope you learned something from this and you have a great day. Thanks for watching.